In this video, I'm going to discuss three steps you need to take to build a passive income empire. This is a simple process that if you stick to it, will make you very, very wealthy. Doing this simple three-step process is kind of like building the pyramids. Imagine the first guy that laid that first brick when it came to building those pyramids. Think about the amount of effort it took to build those massive pyramids, but then look at how well they have stood the test of time. In your case, we're going to focus on building a passive income empire that will last a lifetime or even longer and whose income will actually grow with time. The first step is simple but many people ignore it. If you ignore this first step, then unlike the people who built those massive pyramids, you'll never even lay your first brick. Step one is to buy things that put money into your pocket every single month, quarter, or year. In other words, buy real assets. Now, real assets include dividend stocks, rental property if they produce a positive net cash flow, option trading, and other investments in businesses. You see, you wanna focus on assets that put money into your pocket every single month. If something takes money out of your pocket every month, then it's not a real asset. It's actually a liability. Some examples of liabilities might be a car, a boat, a jet ski, an RV. You see, those things are really liabilities unless they somehow put cash into your pocket every single month. So you first need to know what a real asset is. Real assets are things that pay you every month. Things like rents, royalties, dividends, interest, and even option trading that pays you a monthly option premium. That's it. Buy things that generate a net positive monthly income for you. The second step you need to do in order to build a passive income empire is actually a very simple formula. I call it the 70-30 formula or the 70-30 rule. You see 70% of the net income you make, you set aside to live on. You put that into your checking account. But the next 30% is very important and it's vital that you use that 30% wisely. With that remaining 30%, you're going to take 10% of your total net income and use it to pay down debt. Now this is debt on non-income producing assets. It may even be debt on income producing assets. Then the next 10% is money that you give away. And there is a workaround for this money you give away, and that's to give 10% of your time to some cause, to someone. Do something to help someone else or a group of other people in your life. And the final 10% is to invest. In the second part of this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what to invest in. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But here's a little more detail on the breakdown of each one of these categories. So remember, we've set aside 70% for us to live on. You can do whatever you want with that money. You can pay your house payment, you can buy clothes, you can go on vacation, you can buy some toys. But the last 30% of your net income is what we're now going to focus on. Now, 10% of your net income is used to pay down debt, especially high interest debt. You see, wealthy people, they tend to have little or no debt. If they do have debt, then it's designed to make them money. For example, let's say they borrowed money that costs 6% and they invest that into some real asset that generates net positive income. Well, they want that asset to generate more than 6% because the debt's costing them 6%. So they want that asset to generate two times that 6%, which would be at least 12% or more for that borrowed money. You see, you wanna avoid paying debt if at all possible. On the other hand, if you have debt and it's used to buy assets, then you want your business or you want other assets to pay for that debt. And the return that you get from those assets should far exceed what that debt cost you. Now the second 10% should be used to donate to charities or to causes that you believe in or people that you want to help out. And there is a workaround with this. If you're willing to set aside 10% of your time to help others, then that's perfectly fine. Then you can take that 10% that you had set aside for charities or to help other people and either pay down your debt or put it into this third category we're about to talk about in just a minute. Before I get to that final 10%, let me tell you why this 10% you're giving to charity or this time that you're giving to help other people is so important. There are many benefits that come from helping other people. First of all, you'll most likely be around other people that are also good people that are trying to help other people around them. The other reason is kind of one that people don't tend to think about. You see, we all tend to be our own harshest judge. We know if we deserve good things or not. We can't lie to ourselves. If you spend time every week helping others, then you'll know that you do deserve good things in your life that you do deserve to be successful, that you do deserve to be happy, and your subconscious will help line things up for you so that you can reach your ultimate goal because you deserve it. A second reason to donate to charity or to dedicate your time to helping others is that when you do good for others, it's hard to feel guilty for having money. Now money, it doesn't make you happy. It does help you live a better life. Giving is what actually makes you happy. The final 10% of our net monthly income goes towards investing in assets that generates passive net income. You need to view this like a bill. It has to be paid every paycheck. Don't even think about it. It must be done. There's no negotiation here. Now, some people might say, Randy, it's challenging to live on just 70%. 
but I promise you it can be done. Even if you have to live really inexpensively, figure out a way to live on just 70% of your net monthly income. Look at the big picture. Remember, it takes time to build magnificent structures like pyramids, so it will take time to build your passive income empire, but in the end, I promise it'll be worth it. So your goal here is to build assets that will take care of you so that you don't have to work. Now, if you think that there's just no way that you can live on just 70% of your income, but if you need to, find a way to make extra money in the area that you're going to be investing in. For example, let's say you wanna buy a rental property as an asset that you want to generate passive income for you. Well, figure out a way to make some money in the real estate field, maybe by doing something like wholesaling properties to other investors. If I had to start all over with little or no money, I do it in real estate. I do it by buying houses, apartments, mobile homes, and mobile home parks. I would flip or wholesale deals until I had enough cash to buy the assets I'm about to talk about. Now, as you pay off your debt, take that 10% that was set aside to paying off personal debt and add it to the 10% that you're already investing. And if you're giving with your time, then take that 10% and invest it also in passive income generating assets. Never use this last 30% to buy toys, to buy clothes, to go on vacations or things like that. That's what that first 70% is for. You need to be determined to stick to this plan no matter what's going on in the market. Don't try to time the market when it comes to buying stocks or selling options or real estate. Just make this last 30% a portion of your income that you're not allowed to live on in any way. Now when you buy assets, stick to things that you're familiar with. For example, companies that you buy their products or real estate you're familiar with. Now let's take a minute and focus on that 10% or possibly up to 30% that you're investing. You want your assets to be diversified. Maybe it's something along the lines of this. You want 30% to be in income stocks. Those are companies that pay dividends. You want 30% to be in real estate, whether it's REITs or owning types of rental property. And then you want 30% to be in managed money or money that you're managing yourself by doing things like selling options. And then you want 10% to be in cash or cash equivalents. Now let's talk a little bit more about these assets that you can invest in. The first I mentioned was income stocks. And by the way, if you want some free stocks, there's a Weibo link down the link below that if you use it, will give you some free stock. So please check it out. But when it comes to these income stocks, buy dividend paying stocks and very stable, mature companies, such as the ones known as the dividend kings or dividend aristocrats. One last thing about these dividends you'd be receiving is that dividends typically fall into a lower tax bracket. In fact, if you're in a low enough tax bracket, you actually can avoid paying income tax on those dividends. But if you have to pay tax on your dividends, then they generally tend to be taxed at a lower tax rate. Now, once you get $50,000 in this first bucket of income stocks, then start putting money into real estate or into buying REITs. If you're buying REITs, just know they typically pay out 90% of their income each year to people that own them, which is their stockholders. And generally, most REITs pay increasing dividends over time. Just make sure to do your research. Become a collector. Have a collector's mindset as someone that collects passive income assets. And keep going until your investments now total $100,000. That means you have $100,000 invested total between income stocks and real estate or REITs. Once you've done that, then start putting cash into managed money. This is things like investing in managed ETFs, private placements, professional money managers, or do something like copy Warren Buffett, or trade options like we do a lot of on this channel and in my Patreon group. So now with your investments, you have three sources of income. You have dividends, you have rents, and you have managed money, which is from money managers, or things like option trading. Now as you get this nice portfolio built up, if you haven't already started trading options yet, start doing what we do and sell cash secure put options or covered calls against stock that you own or that you want to own. This will generate you monthly income that is very easy to do consistently. If you don't want to sell options yourself, then you might consider ETFs that sell options for you like Jeffy. The third step to building your pyramid or your passive income empire is to never sell the assets in it. But there is a twist here. Even though you're never to sell your assets, what if you need to access some of the cash you put into those assets? Well, going back to our pyramid example, if a pyramid builder needed to access money that they used to buy bricks or to pay some labor to help build that pyramid, how could they access that money? Well, they could pull a brick out and sell the brick, or the way that wealthy people do it, they could borrow against that pyramid. In your case, if you must access the capital that you put into building that passive income empire, consider borrowing against your assets, but make sure that they will still cash flow even with that new debt payment. Now, why do I say to borrow instead of sell your assets? Well, borrowing is a tax-free transaction. And that's compared to if you sell an asset. When you sell an asset, it's a taxable event. You see, when you sell an asset, 
you're automatically giving the government some of your money. But when you borrow against an asset, it can actually be a transaction that will give you a write-off. In fact, the interest on things like rental properties is actually a tax write-off. Now, ways you can tap into your assets by borrowing against them are things like if you own rental property, get a mortgage against the rental property. Or if you have a stock portfolio, you can borrow against that stock portfolio. You just want to be careful with margin. But never sell assets unless something fundamentally changes with the asset. For example, if a company begins to consistently lose money or if a rental property burns down, then you might consider selling those assets. No matter how much you make, stick to these three steps. If you do this, you will build a massive income empire. I know this is a true statement because this is the exact formula I've used to build my passive income empire starting with nothing. If you want to know as soon as I buy stock and sell options, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see an easy technique we use to find undervalued companies in just a few seconds, check out the video at the link below entitled Discover Undervalued Companies Instantly. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.